Right. Uh, greetings, ladies and gents. Uh, my name is MP Mgomezulu. Today, I'll be taking you through Ipelen Science and Tune. So, the chapter that we are going to cover is the Triangle of Forces, which is found on page 48. And the book that we are going to use is from Mr. M.A. Pence. So, this is lesson number three, part one. Right. Before we can be able to proceed with our problem, we need to define the triangle of forces. What is the triangle of forces? Uh, the definition will go as follows. When three forces act on a point are in equilibrium. We need to highlight when three forces act on a point are in equilibrium or balanced. They can be represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of a triangle taken in order. In other words, when we are working with forces, there's something that we need to understand as well. That whether the forces are balanced or not balanced, but they must be represented in magnitude and direction by the side, either of a triangle or other forces. But in this case, it's for a triangle. But there must be a magnitude and direction for every force. All right. Uh, Let's look at this important information below here. It says when we are drawing a triangle of forces, we need to take note of these uh, five steps. We draw a space diagram. We start clockwise after all known, unknown, or after second unknown forces. We'll check that when we are dealing with the problem itself. Choose a suitable scale for a force diagram which we draw a force diagram and then we measure a force and determine the magnitude and direction of a force. So the force, the, the problem that we are working on today is on page 54, which is example number three. So the question says, determine the magnitude of the force, of forces P and Q, because there are two below. Determine the magnitude of forces P and Q. Right. There is force P is inclining at an angle of 45 degrees. There is force Q is inclining at an angle of 30 degrees. Then we have another force here, which is given as 30 kilonewton. Right. I want us to take note that these two forces, we are not given the magnitude. We are not in enhanced. They are saying we must determine the magnitude of these two forces, right? Then the solution will go as follows. Number one, we need to follow the five steps that I initially explained. Let's go and check what are those five steps. Draw a space diagram. That is point number one, right? Not to scale, as you can note here. Draw a space diagram. This is a space diagram. Can you see now? I've removed the line that was there. And then I've replaced with these two forces, which is P and Q at an angle of 45 degrees, inclining at P, and then at Q at 30 degrees. So we've done the first part. Space diagram has been completed. This is a space diagram, not in two scale. This uh, space diagram is about two marks. To draw it is about two marks. Right. Let's go and check number two. Start clockwise after all known. How many forces we have known? Only one. Where is the force? There is 70. There is 70. There's a known force there. And then we have unknown or after a second unknown force. So where we have one known force, how many forces are known? One, two. Right. That means we will start uh, to say A, B, and C after a second, after a second unknown force. Now, there's something that we, I want us to take note here. When we move or when we draw a, a, a triangle of force, we move clockwise. We move clockwise. How do we determine whether, whether A is there or A is there or A is there? Because when we move clockwise, we move like a watch. We move clockwise. But we are given directions that we must start after a second unknown 
force. Right. Where is the second unknown force? One, move clockwise. Two, where is the second unknown force? There is a second unknown force. Then you can say A, B, there is a force, and then C. I think I've covered that one. Right. Then, when we are drawing our force diagram, because this is the actual uh, solution that they are looking for. When we are drawing a force diagram, we need to choose a scale. Let's go back and check if we are still in line. We have dealt with number one and two. Now choose a suitable scale and draw a force diagram. Where is a suitable scale? There is a suitable scale. One centimeter is two kilonewton. That means for every two kilonewton, we have one centimeter. Or for one centimeter, we have two kilonewton. So let's then go back and check what does this means in terms of the scale. So we have servant AB is a force acting downwards. We have to throw this force because these two, unfortunately, we can't throw these two because there is no magnitude. We we'll start with what we know. What we know is servant kilonewton going downwards. Then we take this servant. We use the scale. If we take this event, we substitute this event into the scale, we will end up having 3.5 centimeters because we'll have we'll say 70 kilonewton. We convert into two centimeters, we divide by two. That means in centimeters it will be 3.5 centimeters because we have divided it by two. Right. So we move from this point. I've indicated here that this is our starting point. We move from this. You can see that I've thrown a small Cartesian plane here. I've thrown a small Cartesian plane. We draw down this 3.5 centimeter force, which was 70 kilonewton force. We throw it down. We throw it down. Then you take what you do here. You take a ruler. You measure. 3.5, you throw 3.5 downwards up to here. And then you make this an ending point, right? So you can see this is another Cartesian plane. Then let's go back now. AB, we've thrown AB is 3.5 centimeters. Now, BC is inclining at an angle of 45 degrees Celsius, which is force P. Let's go in and see. From this point, you can see from this Cartesian plane, there you have it. There is the Cartesian plane there. You see, it's moving upward, right? It's moving from here at 45 degrees. That means you take your protractor, you measure this 45 degrees. You measure this 45 degrees here in this quadrant. You then measure, you draw this line. I'm sorry, you draw this line up. Up to infinity because remember initially we drew three downwards because we had a force of 70. That means there was a magnitude and a direction. But in this case of P, we have only a direction that is pulling upward at an inclining angle of 45 degrees, but there is no magnitude, which we are trying to establish as to what is the magnitude of this as per the question. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure this angle and then we draw this line up to infinity. You can see it's a continuation, you see, up to infinity. Then we say now we are left with only one option to go back and draw force Q because now we have drawn this, but there is no magnitude. Now we have to go back and draw this Q and see. Right, let's go back and see. At this first quadrant, we have to draw the force Q. Let's check here. When we come here, unfortunately, when you are, you are here, remember that this line was starting from here up until the infinity. You were supposed to continue up until the end. Right. The infinity is the line that is not ending. Now, we can't put 
somewhere queue here because we don't know where this line ends but what we have to do because we are left with no options now we've drawn 3.5 we've drawn p but now we have to draw q where do we go draw q we go back to where we started our starting point we measure 80 degrees we draw pulling up line we draw a downward line from 30 degrees as you can see here this line is going up it's showing you that the direction is going up but there is no magnitude but what we have to do when we go there we will pull this direction up and also we draw it down we are interested in the point of intersection where these two lines intersect p and q we stop remember i said we draw this line from here which is starting point we draw q but there is no magnitude we don't end we draw it up to infinity and then we pull it down where there is a line of intersection we stop and then we can see from here all oh, these lines they intersect there then we can measure from here to here using a ruler now we can measure from here to here remember these two forces we're pulling up hence you can notice the directions now look at p and q p is going up as it was here and q is going up as well not here but within the drawing which means this is a complete triangle of forces try by the way means three which means we must have three sides one two and three if you like you can take an eraser and wrap these lines you wrap this line you wrap this line we were interested in the point of intersection now we are done with our problem but now we have to match because the question was saying determine the magnitude of force p and q below what is the magnitude the magnitude we can only determine it by measuring from here to here in terms of centimeters we will have 2.56 centimeters you put a ruler here you measure you find 2.56 centimeters you multiply by a scale you get 51.2 kilonewton p p then for q you take a ruler you put it here here you measure with your ruler you get 2.09 centimeters you take this 2.09 centimeters you multiply by a scale and then you get 41.8 kilonewtons we are done with our problem this is a complete triangle of forces thank you so much uh, ladies and gents for your time i hope to meet you on our this next lesson. Thank you.